Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about virtual consults. Specifically, we're going to go over some big words, synchronous versus asynchronous virtual orthodontic consults. Let's talk about that. And I have a lot of content um, on YouTube. I probably have like 10 videos about virtual consults at least. Um, I also have some PDFs, some step-by-step -step guides. I beta tested various turnkey products that are out there. So if you're interested in virtual consults, there's a million different ways to do it. And what you need to do is sit down with your team, go over your existing flow and think about what works for you. And something that works for an orthodontics office is going to be very different than what works for a general dentist office. The And I'm happy to talk to either and any of you. Um, I did go to, what is today? I don't know, the 23rd of November, 2020, I think. I did attend the Ortho Summit, um, the Invisalign Orthodontic Summit last weekend. Um, it was the first time I've ever been, first time they've had a virtual one. Um, I've never been to the real one in person, but actually I thought it was really helpful. I got a lot out of it. So I would really recommend that you attend your Invisalign Summit, especially if next year, if they do have a virtual component, it was so nice not to have to travel, you know, Las Vegas or whatever um, to go. Um, so anyways, but definitely a big topic was virtual consults, how they're doing it, how they recommend they do it. So obviously, if you're only doing Invisalign in your office, then that makes it pretty easy because they actually have a virtual consult app and it's all connected to the Invisalign dashboard and the Invisalign photo uploader and all that stuff is all intermingled. And they also have a virtual check-in app and it's free. You can use it. All you have to do is opt in, click on a few things, and then you can do it. However, if you're doing more than just Invisalign in your practice, you're doing white label aligners, other brands of aligners, as well as Invisalign, you're doing braces. I don't know about that. I'm not sure about using, that's probably not going to fly after a period of time. If you're using their branded virtual console app, I didn't ask, it didn't come up in the summit, but in my mind, I'm going, I'm wondering what these orthos are thinking, because clearly they're not only doing Invisalign. They use this term called share of care. And that was like what percentage of their cases, overall cases in their practice were in this line. And they, of course, all the speakers were somewhere between 60 and 85% share of care. But, you know, realistically, sure, you can do that. But do you really want to do that? So I don't know. Um, in any case, I'm not going to make judgment because I love getting le letters from Invisalign's legal team. Oh, I love them so much. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. So in any case, anytime I say something that they don't like, I get nasty letters. So they're kind of big bullies. And we were on like really great terms for about a year. And all of a sudden they went crazy on me again and they started being rude. So um, I will try to be, I love their product. I don't like the way they treat doctors who, I mean, realistically, I think they're a fantastic product, but I don't think they're the only product out there, nor do I think you should ever put all your eggs in one basket because you don't know what this company is going to do. And look what they've done to me. Oh, they're super nice to me. And then they're mean to me again. So, you know, they bully me around. But in any case, this is not me bashing Invisalign. It's fun, though. Um, so I am definitely persona non grata with them, although I probably produce million dollars for them every year. So, hmm, interesting. Um, you'd think they'd be nicer to me than that. Okay. But anyways, we're talking about synchronous versus asynchronous virtual orthodontic consults. Um, we're talking about the difference, what I would do. So I'm going to be focusing more towards general dentists with this conversation because I'm figuring orthodontists have figured this out. So let's talk about what I think is the easiest way to jump into virtual ortho consults. First of all, I think you should absolutely have them. And if you put in virtual orthodontic consults into Google, you're going to see uh, just a ton of general of orthodontists that are already doing it. And it's all orthos, the first couple of pages in Google. Here's ours. Here's ours. Go click on them. Check them out. See what they're doing. You should copy it. And they're, trust me, they're not all using the Invisalign version of it. Not at all. So um, personally, what I've seen a few doctors do, which I think really works, is to do initially to do asynchronous because it buys you, and it's it's actually very similar to what I do in my own Straight Smile Solutions consulting practice. I have synchronous consults where I work with doctors synchronous, which means in real time, we're working together, we use Zoom. Or I have asynchronous where they send me through a HIPAA compliant manner, content, patients to review, questions. It might be aligners, it might be Invisalign, it might be braces, it might be phase one, it might be airway. And then I report back with an answer, okay? And ultimately it depends. So I love the idea 
because even if you're a general dentist, yes, general dentists have a bazillion opportunities every day coming in and out of their off office, you know, but these are their existing patients. They're coming in for recalls. They're coming in their new patients, their opportunities. But you also have other patients who maybe already have a general dentist. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're only looking for ortho and they're looking to you for that and they will never find you otherwise. So one, right, especially now with COVID, it's funny because they did a study and I don't remember the exact numbers that came on the Invisalign um, summit, what they said, but they said when patients are given the option, the majority actually pick the virtual consult. You can either schedule an appointment in our office or you can schedule a virtual consult. Either way, free, click the button. Which one do you prefer? When patients are given the option, they choose the virtual consult. And again and again, the doctors that were lecturing, they kept saying, I'm getting possibly up to twice as many consults per month now that I put virtual out there. And of course, you're going to create a lot of marketing content around it. And you're going to be putting on Instagram, you're going to be putting on Facebook, and you'll be putting on YouTube. And of course, you want to create some videos about how to do it and showing some mock ups and showing some fake patients doing it so that patients can watch it. Oh, I see. That's not that hard because initially it sounds scary to them. But I think the vast majority of anyone under age 40 is that's not going to be scary to them. I've been doing consults with physicians post-COVID all the time, all Zoom-based or doxy.me-based. Um, it's just pretty normal for me. So I don't think patients are going to think it's all that odd. Um, I mean, of course, keep in mind, if you're doing a consult, sure, you don't have, you may not have the x-rays yet, you know, and you may not have done a clinical exam yet. So everything is not totally binding until they come in and you, quote, finalize it. You know, it's just an estimation, but, you know, paperwork can always be redone. You know what I mean? So, um, but okay. So again, let's go over asynchronous, which I think is the easier. So this is what I would do. I would use a HIPAA compliant way to communicate the easiest, cheapest one that's out there. And I'm going to tell you, and if you've read my book, which just came out last week on Amazon, um, all about launching ortho in a practice, we talk about GP ortho tracking, which is my all time fave because of price functionality and the fact that you can embed that widget in your website. And it really doesn't slow down your website either. So patients are going to come to your website. They're going to go on this tab that says click here to do a virtual consult. The virtual consult for GP ortho tracking is asynchronous. They're going to be instructed how to give a series of um, static images, not unlike what the direct consumer companies are doing. Yes, they're doing static images. No, it's not an app on your phone because that is very expensive. Um, however, that's how Invisalign's works. They do have a HIPAA compliant app, but you're going to go, they're going to say, use chopsticks, use spoons, or you can mail them a retractor if you want. It's up to, up to you. And they're going to show front picture, side picture, biting down, other side picture, biting down, top, bottom. Um, that's five and a couple extra aura images. They're going to upload them. It'll be decent enough. The now photos on phones nowadays are, are good enough resolution. And yeah, it may not be as good as what you're doing in office, but you're going to retake the pictures in the office for your official records. This is just screening. Then the alert's going to come in to a message to whatever email you set up the account to. And you're, if you want, you're, you have to figure out who's going to respond to these. Obviously, the main thing is whether you do Smile Snap or you do GP ortho tracking, somebody needs to own this. So when these messages come in, the key to this, you have to have a response within 24 hours, seven days a week. So someone has to own this. It can't just sit in someone's email box for a week because that, you know, you lost your lead then. Someone opens it, someone reviews it, and then you need to reply. So either you can reply, you know, in a, like I said, asynchronous, you can reply in a HIPAA compliant email, or the easiest way to do it is for you to um, either schedule a Zoom session, now you turned it into synchronous, or the doctor can record, which I think this is the best way to do it because we want the doctor to get to know you. The doctor can record a two or three minute blurb, you know, on his or her iPhone or, you know, laptop or wherever. Hey, Kelly, thanks so much for sending me your images. And, you know, obviously you got, you're getting a little information about their chief complaint, their age, their history. Um, it's even better if you can have them fill out, you know, obviously medical dental history, sign all your paperwork. So you have that all at one time, as well as the static images. It looks like to me, you'd be a great candidate for X, Y, and Z. It'll take about this long price point's going to be about this, you know, here's, and then, you know, from there, um, it can go to your front office or back office who can, well, TC, excuse me, who can go over, you know, pricing and how that, what the options are. Um, you can bundle it all up. You can put it in a HIPAA compliant email. 
um, so that they download it because it does have patient information in it and they can open it and they can you know, view it on their own without being pressured. And then they can have a link to go ahead and schedule that to complete the consult. Or they can go have a link to go ahead, yeah, I wanna get started. And you just send them the, the paperwork to get started. You can do that too. You'd be surprised. I believe one of the lecturers at Invisalign said that of 86, I'm just literally, I might be off by a few numbers, but I'm just, you know, in my head, it was still fresh. It was something like, oh, during COVID, we were closed for eight weeks, 10 weeks. I did 86 virtual consults and 56 actually started without even coming in the office. They actually put their down payment down and did their paperwork. I mean, that's two thirds. That's two thirds. That's a lot of money that they did just from the doctor being in his own home and the front office being in her own home and the patients being in their own home. They brought in a ton of re revenue, hundreds of thousands of dollars just starting, you know? So, I mean, clearly it's working, so why not do it, right? But again, the key is it has to be a HIPAA compliant platform. Things to think about. If you're using GP Ortho tracking, everything will go through there. So it's a lot easier um, to do it. Or you can, like I said, you could actually have ad an admin day, which maybe is Tuesday or something, um, you know, and patients can actually schedule synchronous consults where you're both on Zoom and they're in real time. They're showing you their their they're retracting and they're showing you their teeth and then you're just talking one-on-one, -on -one. but that takes a little more coordination. So I like the idea of doing either a combination of that or at least getting that static images at the time the patient is hot and ready to go. Well, yeah, I'm gonna do it right now, you know? Cause some of them you're gonna capture them. And then at least you got their email, their contact information, and you can follow up with them in real time. Because sometimes if you have them have to schedule an appointment, which is on next week or the week after, maybe it's not convenient for them, they may decide not to do it and you'll never capture that lead. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. I'm glad to talk to you more if you have questions. Um, I love consults and love to do a mock-up. And if you need help with scripting or verbiage for consults, I have lots of great tips and tricks. And I also have some great resources I can send you. All right. And um, yeah, do check out my book. You can find it on my website at straightsmilesolutions.com. Take care.